Right, so one of today's jobs is going to be replacing the starter motor. I haven't really used the van much since I bought it, but I did take it out last week. Uh, I had to jump it off, and then when I got to where I was going, it wouldn't even jump back off again. It was just ticking and clicking. Uh, so that's making me think that the starter motor is on its way out. Uh, looking down at the bottom of it, it's hard to see here at the moment because it's right underneath all of the gubbins in here. But it looks as though it's probably still the original starter motor. So if it is, then that's 18, 19 year old now. So it's about time to give it a change. So I'm going to have to get the belly pan off from underneath, uh, get in from underneath and do, undo the screws. Uh, you need hex bolts to undo those and uh, disconnect all the cables, a straight swap and replacement and redo it back up again. So first things first, I'm going to disconnect the power from the battery, get underneath and undo the belly pan. Uh, there's four bolts either side and then I think there's some like swing down arms. So we'll have a look when we get underneath and see how easy that belly pan's going to come off. And then we'll crack on and get the start old starter motor off, new one on, and I'll show you how easy it is to do. Right, so first things first, that's about to be disconnected. I'm about to take the air filter off just to be able to have decent access. Uh, the power positive terminal was a little bit awkward to get off, so I've just had to get a little bit more uh, space just to work around, just so I can get the screwdriver in just to loosen up the clamp that was on the terminal. So that's about to be disconnected. Next is to undo the belly pack. Right, so I'm just undoing the last bolt on the belly pan. You've got two bolts on the front, one either side, one there. I've already undone the one on the other side. And then you've got another two bolts at the very back of the pan as well. You can see that there where it's hanging a little bit loose. And there's one of the bolts. And again, you've got the same on the other side. And that little rear part keeps the back of the belly pan in place. So I've already done the two uh, back ones and the one on the other side. So I'm just going to finish undoing this one and then that's the belly pan loose. Right, so that's the belly pan completely loose. So now I should be able to get in to the starter motor. As you see right there is the starter motor, the slightly rusty bit. So you've got three bolts to take off to get that off. One at the bottom there, one on the top and one on the other side. It's, again, it's a little awkward access to actually get into it, that's why it's best to take the belly pan off in the first place. Just to give that little bit of easier access. So, I'm going to disconnect the wires from the top of it. There, you generally do those from above. And then I'm going to get in and get the bolts undone, get it swapped out, and get the new one fitted. Alright, so I'm just about to start unscrewing the old starter motor. Uh, there's two bits that need to be undone wiring wise. You've got your main big uh, earthen wire type stuff there, and you've got your power on just a spade socket that's going into that one. So both of those need disconnecting, then the actual start motor itself can come out. Then the replacement unit that I've got there, brand spanking new unit, and again it's just got a spade connector and another bolt connector on the top where the wires will reconnect. So I'm going to get the spinner out. Uh, get the nut disconnected, get the spade terminal ripped off, get the three mounting bolts for the starter motor off, and then reverse the process and I'll have a brand new starter motor fitted. Right, that's the wiring disconnected, so now just the bolts to go. I've already loosened that bolt up there, as you can see. So I'm just doing this one. And I'll probably do the top one from the top, just for easier access. But that's now loose as well. That's going to be seen there. I'm not going to do them all the way undone until they're all loose and ready to go. So I'll try and get the top one undone now. Right, the very top bolt can be a bit of a bugger to undo, uh, just because of restricted access and where it is. So on this I've got a really long extension socket and I'm going in from almost the wheel arch. That's pretty much almost the only way you can actually see where the bolt is and actually be able to work on it as well. So I'm on it there, I'm just slacking it off. So within 30 seconds or so, the starter motor should be loose enough to come out. Right, so that's all the bolts out. Uh, it was a little bit stuck there so I just gave it a little tap with the hammer. And that's loosened it up nicely, so now it should just come straight out. Now 
there's one old knackered starter motor. As you can see, it's probably on its way out, past its best. So definitely time for a new one. So now it's just going to be a case of reversing the procedure, putting the old one back in exactly in the same position, putting all the bolts back on, wiring it back on, and it should be alright. Bit of a difference between the old and the new. The new is nice and shiny, all brand spanking. I say the old one is probably the original one from uh, the van. So if it is, it's 19 years old, and if it's not, then it's still a hell of a lot older than the brand spanker. So let's get this one fit. Alright, so that's the three bolts back in place. Uh, when you are putting the bolts, you do need to look out for some of the mounting brackets that go through the bolts for the starter motor, just for the cabling and some of the cooling pipes. I say that shares a mounting bracket with the starter motor. So you've just got to be careful that any brackets that you are taking out when you're removing the starter motor, just be sure with it they are put back in place when the bolts are going back in. So now all I've got to do is connect the uh, the two wires to the motor, connect the power to the battery, and that is a fully replaced starter motor. Right, so that's all the cabling reconnected, all the bolts reconnected, the battery reconnected. So in theory, should just start and turn over now. The only problem is I don't know how much charge I've got in the battery because this van's been literally been stood since I bought it about three months ago. So I think the battery's probably going to need a charge anyway. But either way, that is the start motor completely replaced. So let's go and see if it's going to fire up or whether the battery's going to need a charge. Right, so I'm just about to start it. Got the key there. I just thought I'd best put the air filter on first, just because I don't want any rubbish or crap getting sucked into the uh, the air intake. So let's go and see if the replacement start the motor has done the job. So this hasn't been started in. Uh, well, I tried it last week, and that's when I realised it looked as though it was going to be uh, needing a start the motor. And I say it's barely been used in three months, so let's give it a go. Hey! So we have power, we now have ignition going through and it shows the battery's relatively okay as well and it was definitely the start of the motor. So there is a job done. Now we need, all we need to do is put the belly pan on and uh, that's it all done. And just to be sure as well, it certainly started a lot quicker there than when I jumped it off as well but just to be sure. Oh, that, that's even quicker then as well so Sorted. That is one start the motor completely replaced on a VW T4. By all means, have a look at my channel to have a look at uh, the conversion of this van. Uh, it's coming along, so now I've got the start the motor replaced. At least I can actually use the van, so I can go out and pick a few more bits up with it as well. So that's not a bad job, really. It's about to take me about an hour something like that and the most awkward part is getting the belly pan off and getting access to the back bolt after that it's uh, easy sailing really uh, the starter motor itself that I got that from Euro Car Parts they had a sale on the website so that was £65 for a brand new RTX uh, starter motor which isn't really bad at all really uh, when they're not in the sale they're around about 100 you can get them cheap on eBay as well but I thought I'd go for a branded one from a trusted supplier so if there were any issues I could just take it straight back but yeah, that is now a brand spanking new start motor, completely fitted, tested, and working away. Hope you found the video useful.